It may be one of the best business stories you've never heard of. It's not easy because socks aren't necessarily something that's real sexy to talk about. Until now. The life of forward deployed U.S. troops is physically demanding. While the military equips them with basic provisions, they're also sometimes supplemented by gifts from home. And one of the most sought after items may surprise you, high quality socks. An army may march on its stomach, but it can't get there with blisters on its feet. Anybody that I talk to, any friends or family, that they ask they wanted to send me anything, I'd always say socks, because I, except for certain good pairs like Thorlo's, you go through socks real quick. So the Thorlo Company, based in North Carolina, started making specially crafted socks for members of the armed services. These aren't part of any government contract. It's a private company initiative. Thorlo, along with their loyal customers, pay to donate these socks to American troops. We have, in the past few years, have raised the money and uh, they donate thousands of pairs of socks and ship them overseas. It's nice to get socks from somebody that knows exactly what I need them for instead of just basic ordinary socks that just don't cut it. To send that out of their own pocket and then eventually Thorlo corporately sending those products over to our troops, I mean, it's just a, a justification that, that you know at least some people are behind you back home. At a time when they need home the most, we're there for them. That sense of home threads back to the company's humble origins. It's in this modest house in Statesville, North Carolina, where Lewis Thornburg began the business. You know, granddaddy was, uh, among other things, he was a craftsman and uh, a dying tool maker, a machinist. And he was an entrepreneur, using his savings to purchase knitting machines. When they first started, my grandmother and my grandfather would take turns knitting for 12 hours and one would lay on a pile of socks and take a nap and while the other one knitted and then they would switch out and that always left such a huge impression in my mind that that uh, before they ever had employees they were doing this thing on their own and he just through sheer grit will power whatever you want to call it just refused not to live his dream a dedication to quality craftsmanship turned that dream into a reality as business picked up, the family home was extended to accommodate a mill. It's basically a concrete block building that, that the family got together and pretty much built themselves. Now, decades later, his son Jim at the helm, the operation is substantially larger, employing hundreds of workers and boasting a wide variety of highly regarded product lines. And while the business grew, the operators made a commitment to keep manufacturing jobs close to home. The Thorlow Company has always been in Statesville, North Carolina, and will always be in Statesville, North Carolina, the manufacturing process. Um, and the, the Southern culture and the hospitality is definitely woven deep. It's a sediment firmly endorsed by Thorlow's owner, who vows the company will remain on U.S. soil even after his death. This is what I tell the group and leadership, look, when I pass, Houdini could not get back. I will come back. I will haunt you at night. You will never sleep again if you screw this up after I'm gone, okay? So I say, no, we'll never go, we'll never outsource. The strong resolve to stay U.S. based doesn't come easy. The American textile industry has been battered by foreign competitors who don't always play fair. There have been times when it has taken us two to three years to develop something and we see competitors and knockoffs knocking us off within 30 to 60 days. A lot of other U.S. textile manufacturers haven't been able to withstand that kind of pressure. You can go into some western North Carolina towns now and it's like ghost towns. I mean because once the uh, textiles kind of dried up and the furniture factories dried up, there's nothing left over there. But just like the U.S. troops they support, Thorlo won't back down from a fight. The generations of families that work side by side here claim Thorlo's unusual corporate culture gives it a critical advantage. And at the center of it all 
is owner Jim Thronberg. I've never met an owner like Jim and how he thought about the company and the people that worked in the company. Jim doesn't see the folks who work here as mere employees. He encourages them to take a more personal view of the business. Everybody in leadership is held to that standard that they should approach everything they do as if they own the whole business. He wants everyone in his family, and we are his family, he wants us to be honest. He wants us to come to him with everything that we're thinking, everything we believe. He may not always agree, but he respects it. The respect is mutual, and so is the trust. In fact, the staff is so dedicated to quality craftsmanship that the company sees no need for the type of managers found in traditional textile mills. These folks have always had somebody that was paid to make sure they did all the work right and did a lot of it today. There was always a supervisor, and I took this away from them and said, you're responsible for your own work. We don't have bosses. We don't have uh, people that are telling you what to do, people that we answer to. It's more of a team. It's, it's like playing on a sports team that's really good and they're winning. Um, it doesn't get any better than that. There's nobody in the company that can't contribute. I mean, there's no walls, there's no barriers. Everybody's ideas are welcomed. Doesn't mean we can do them all, <laughs> but everybody's ideas are welcome. Embracing the best ideas in a workplace without bosses requires an extra level of discipline from the staff. They have to straddle two concepts, working in a team environment while also internalizing leadership skills. If you're aware enough to understand that you're an individual that needs a lot of structure, and that you need that hierarchical structure to do a good job if you need to know exactly what's expected of you and exactly what your role is, then this is probably not the place for you. We work off of a system of collaboration and, and creative collaboration at that, and that's a messy process. But the results can be stunning. At the Customer Support Center, phone calls and emails pour in from satisfied customers. This colorful wall, it's actually what I, a wall of what I call my love letters or people that are really special to me and were kind enough to send pictures. These are people that, that we've talked to, that we've made a difference in their lives. The correspondence energizes the staff. I start every morning, just like everyone else in the company does, reading the emails we receive from consumers the day before. It's one of, the, one of the things I look forward to receiving in my inbox because it, it almost psychs you up. That's what makes us care. People who, who, who owe their very lives, according to their own words, to our product and how it helps them do what they want to do, that, that's what makes us do what we do. Thorlow's distinctive culture has been observed far beyond its home base, drawing the attention of a seemingly unlikely source.